My name is Vittorio Lorenzo and I'm working in a group, as a group manager in the product planning and strategy for our future vehicles. So it's my pleasure right now to present a car that was a dream for us a few years ago. And it was a big challenge because once we saw the outstanding design that Peter Schreier has donated this car, we had a big pressure to deliver on performance as much as the car promised on design. So the first step was actually to develop a completely new platform. And I'm proud to say this is most probably the most advanced platform we ever developed for a car. First of all, proportion-wise, as Veronique said, the cabin has moved backward, and second, the car has to meet this bold design, so that's why we structured around the design the bold fenders and nice shape front structuring to deliver on you know, the dynamic and, and also on body stiffness, which is the prerequisite for every good driving car. Now, in order to achieve that, we developed our old stamped parts on purpose to do this car. This is probably one of the biggest old stamped parts you're going to see in, in a platform. And this is what we had to develop in order to give the right stiffness with such a long body. And the second point I would like to add is that in a 4 meter 80 cars, we managed to put 173 meters, so I would say much more uh, structural adhesive, in order to give the body strength and to reach almost 700 megapascal of body strength without increasing the weight, so still keeping the lightweight. Lightweight is pretty important because, as you know, it has to do with driving dynamics and pure performance. To provide the right ride and handling to the car, because we knew already that the engine that's going to come under the bonnet is going to perform, actually, we managed to put in the car uh, two refined suspension architectures. The first one is a front McPherson, for sure, so independent wheels, but this we coupled with a dual lower arm in order to be able to withstand the lateral force acceleration based on our Nubring experience where we check and test this car many, many times and we did the same on the rear axle which is still a multi-link with five links but it's also structured around a dual bone support a subframe for that which is good for both stiffness and also improving comfort the second point is the steering wheel. The car delivers on steering wheel because of the architecture. Architecture is based on a rack-mounted motor, so this means more direct feel on the street, less friction, and first time for our brand, we also have a variable gear ratio for the steering wheel. This means a non-linear response. I'm going to tell you a bit more about that later on. I'm proud to say also that we managed to spend so many hours at Nurburgring uh, developing the electronic suspensions and we decided at the end to offer something like 19 sensors overall on the car just to manage the suspension tuning. So we have two different kind of sensors for each wheel managing the different G-forces acceleration and three on the body. On top of that, we have a control valve for the ABS, specifically tuned for the drive modes, and also each shock absorber can be at the end tuned for that thing. This basically means that the compression force and the rebound force can be dramatically changed following the piston velocity. So based on the way you drive, the car responses. All these different characteristics of the car, especially when it comes to steering wheel, to power train responsiveness and riding handling, they can be fine-tuned from the customer. This means the time you are sitting in the nice interior of Stinger, you can select between five driving modes. At the end, the smart driving mode is the one that follows your driving style, understand where you want to go and how you want to drive, and select one of the four. And echo and fuel saving mode, of course, the word, the word saying on its own. And we went down to the Sport Plus, which is actually disabling every electronic help for you if you want to enjoy driving. I strongly advise to use this one only on the track, I would say. And more than that, there is also a tuning which acts on the all-wheel drive, I'll tell you again a bit more later, and the engine sound is also tuned by this driving mode. Regarding brake system, I would like just to highlight on top of what we have a couple of features. The first one is actually the DAC mode, it's even also fine-tuned for with the driving, sports mode, sport plus mode, and so on and so forth. And actually, as you can see clearly from the pictures, because we are not talking about talking about sport cars, so I would like to highlight the different behaviors of the car. I think the pictures are talking, speaking for their own. And when you are in a comfort mode, the car does whatever is necessary to keep the car straight, stable, and parallel to the road. In sport mode, they increase the agility, enable the car to have a bit of yaw, but still keeping all the possible safety. 
uh, but giving you a limited drift in order to enhance the pressure to drive without compromising any, any safety. In sport plus, sport plus mode, you can go wide, so it's up to you. So the car is going to challenge you to try to keep it on, on the road, especially with the 3.3 engine. Uh, we enhanced the braking system by offering in this car, again for the first time for our brand, the brand wide performance brake system. The main outcome of this is track endurance. Track endurance means when you're driving a lot and you're stressing your brake system a lot, the elongation of the pedal, so this means how much the pedal gets spongy because the oil is overheating by the brakes, is reduced from 38 to 23 percent thanks to the brand of brakes. Another highlight is the steering feel. As I told before, we have a variable steering ratio. Variable steering ratio means non-linear. This is what you can see here, how much is changing from this curve. On top of that, we also change the torque feedback you get in the steering wheel based on the driving mode, which can be more steep or more comfortable. The comfortable one is, is the blue one, and the steep one is the sport one, which mm -hmm. enhances your feeling on the street and also gives you more feedback about the car chassis reaction. So all of that comes together with the damping tuning. As I said before, damping tuning relies on a bunch of sensors all over the car. Uh, what I would like to add basically is that we work on the two different uh, damping phases. One is the primary damping phases. You can see the frequency. This means basically the way when you are driving, the car reacts on cornering and braking. And the more you go high with the frequency, the more we call this sequence secondary. The more you go high from the frequency, the more we are talking about vibration and then bumps on the road. So in the comfort mode, the belt absorption or the road inputs basically means we open the valves and we let the suspension and the dampers do their job. Uh, of course, this compromise the primary acceleration in order to give you more comfort and to feel the car as a Gran Turismo should be while traveling. But sometimes you are in a rush. And you can select the sport mode, this means the primary reaction of the damping becomes much more stiffer, becomes much more direct, without compromising that much the secondary frequencies, as you can see from the graph. And this comes from basically the good geometry, because this comes basically from the weight of the wheels and from the own geometry of suspensions. Okay, of course, when the vibration they become too high, everything becomes flat because you are hovering over the vibration. So, I'm proud to say that the combination of all this technology and all this engineering behind has put us in a condition. And um, yeah, that car with comparable engine, and comparable trim level, and comparable body is the one which was our benchmark for developing this project. So, I would say quite challenging. Um, and this is what I try to also, these are objective data. So, those are measured data. This is not somebody driving the car and saying this one is better. Yeah. Those are objective data, and we reached 17% more direct during routine handling, and 10% lower understeering at the limit. This is based on, on our measures of accelerations and so on. Uh, and this comes from both lateral acceleration gain and at the limit, in routine handling, and, uh, and so on and so forth. The lateral acceleration responsiveness and the front rear balance is 10% quicker of the competitor. And this means you get a much more agile car while driving, and also the side slip stability is 30% lower side slip angle for lower limit stability. This is something we measured on the work. So I would say not an easy track for whatever car. This means destroying the tires, but it was fun. Regarding the powertrain, <coughs> when you have a great chassis, when you have a good suspension, uh, you need an engine that delivers. And I would like you just to take home one word out of this chart, which is plenty of numbers, and this word is torque. To deliver Gran Turismo performance, you need a car that is performing all the time. This means you can go cruising and you can go on a track. And the main word for me was torque. So we asked our powertrain engineers to deliver as much torque as possible for as much time as possible. And the pinnacle of this torque is actually comes with a 3.3 liter. From my point of view, what we reached here is it's pretty outstanding because actually we have sorry to say, diesel level torque on gasoline range. And this is, for an engineer, probably the best of two worlds. So we reached 510 Euro meter, starting from a rev range, which is just slightly above the high limit. All those engines can be coupled with automatic 88 transmission, of course, and all those engines come in different flavors. 
One of those I would like really to highlight is the four-wheel drive system we have. The four-wheel drive system we have is covered with electronically controlled clutch. This means we have complete is a disco cinematic clutch. We have complete control about the torque we want to transfer front to back. Actually, back to front because the car is basically a rebuild driven car. And we manage also to tune this, this clutch according to the level of driving you will like to go. So the sport driving mode, we connected actually the lateral acceleration and the yaw rate of the car with actually the repartition of the torque front to back axle. In comfort mode, you're basically almost driving 50-50% to give you this neutral feeling of cruising. And when it goes forward, you can go, when you're driving very extremely, so lateral acceleration about 1G, you can go basically full rear wheel drive. <coughs> Another system offered in the two-wheel drive version only to still give you a nice acceleration out of the corners is the electronically controlled limited slip differential. So that's all from the technical side, so what we, we are able to fit in the car in order to deliver, and I will over the word again to Veronique for the package data. Thank you. Thank you. All passengers benefit from an ample room and